Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a big, big shout of praise. Amen. Our Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We declare there is no other God but Jehovah. We thank you that we are not waiting for the Messiah. The Messiah has come. We thank you today for this house of faith. We thank you for the man and woman of God. And we thank you for all the people that are here. And those that are by, on by technology. We declare the Lord is mighty. We declare there is no other name by which we will declare. But by the name of Jesus Christ. Every other name is going to bow to that name. And I pray today, Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to permeate in this meeting. I now dedicate my life for you, Father. I believe everything I preach will be filtered through the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I am so honored and blessed to be here. Thank you, my dear friend, Pastor Ripley. God bless you and your wife and, of course, your daughter and your son. And uh, your wonderful family as well that we've met. My wife and my the remaining part of my family is in uh, Boston right now. And I never had America on my itinerary for this year. But uh, God planned it so that uh, my youngest daughter, her husband, is now going to study at uh, MIT and he is going to do his master's. And so uh, that's why I am in your country. And uh, we, the entire family is here. My both daughters, both son-in-laws, and my dear wife together with our two grandchildren. Now, I want to say today that on uh, all the platforms and in the church that Pastor Ripley still needs for me to fulfill my promise. We were going to the Nelson Mandela capture site. And we realized time was going we had to turn around, go back to church. And I promised him that he will go to the capture site. And now he does not even know that they have renovated, updated, upgraded the entire capture site. So, Pastor Ripley, I don't know when you're doing your schedule, but remember, I have to keep my word. <laughs> and I told him, I warned him, I'm going to make it public. <laughs> and so I made it public. <laughs> it's done. Amen. And you know, we, when I walked in the room, I felt so strong. Now, you know, when you say family, really what you mean, we have the same DNA. And when I hugged him, I felt the DNA. And so we're so, so blessed. But Pastor, because of you and your wife and family, if any, any of these wonderful people sitting here today, 
as you have encouraged them to visit our land, they need to remember that because of you, our doors will be open to them. Amen. Amen. Because of you. And so I extend that because I feel that, you know, it's not like I've come to visit here. I've not come to show you what my gifting is. I've just come to drink tea. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. You know, I don't need to preach my best sermon yet today. Because I can preach my worst sermon. Family is not what you can produce. It's your DNA. And so that's where it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now, I don't know how you have gone through COVID. Being a leader, I can tell you in 43 years of full-time ministry, I have never had difficulties in leadership like the two and a half years we had gone through the pandemic. It has been a very difficult time. When we thought we knew what we were doing, we learned we didn't know nothing. <laughs> Governments made decisions on our behalf, shut down the churches, shut down travel, shut down businesses, etc., etc., etc. We had to have social distancing. We couldn't come and worship together. And that's why we have so many people that are online. I want to encourage you. You better get offline and come back to the house. I am not rebuking you. I'm encouraging you. Okay? Because we cannot forsake the assembling of the saints. And I believe that people need to understand coming together in this way and the man of God brings the word the church is empowered. And you cannot tell me that you can be online. Now, I want to make a, a confession. 30% of our church is still online. But I'm encouraging them. I'm not rebuking them. You say, what do you mean you're not rebuking? Is because you have the choice. But as a man of God, you need to be in the house of God. Amen. You heard what I said? And especially the young people. Especially the young people. I know technology is wonderful. But I'm not impressed. I am an old time preacher. I believe in the values of the word of God. And so I just say that. I don't know. I didn't play in this pastor. God planted me. So next week, that 50% there is going to be in the building. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to Paul and ask him. Now, let me just tell you something. We come from a very, very difficult situation where, especially in my city, we've had COVID. I've had some key people pass on. My uncle, who was a pastor, passed on. We didn't know whether to go to the funeral. 
whether to pray at the funeral, whether to visit the people, whether we can contribute or do anything. And so, it was a very difficult time. Then, in my city, somehow, there's a division of opinions with the ruling governing party and a segment promoted looting, which we have not recovered from yet. Many corporate buildings have gone up in flames. Let me explain to you. People will go into a building like Walmart and leave nothing. You know, it was crazy. High-ended goods, low-ended goods, food, and uh, uh, all kinds of appliances. I mean, it's crazy. I tell you, when evil manifests, they do some crazy stuff. When evil manifests. Then, to compound it this last April, we had floods in our city where your house was here before the flood and it landed there as a pile of bricks. So, you know, it's, it's, it was very difficult. And so we continued and last November, I had a flu. So I, my wife took me to the doctor and the doctor gave me injection, body pains, etc., etc. But my wife insisted that you must go for a test. I went for a test. So I came home, took the medication, etc., etc. I felt much better. But three in the morning, I woke up, got to my phone. Guess what? I was positive. I always thought I'm a positive man. <laughs> I was positive, positive. I'll tell you what I did. I wrote my wife an email telling her, this is the things you must do, this is the things you mustn't do. And, and she won't listen to come in the room, bring my food, all that. So I was uh, finished my first day. I woke up midnight. I sat on my prayer chair. I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. Now, I don't know. It may not be agreeable with you, but I treated COVID as a demonic spirit. And I took authority over that. And after I sensed a breakthrough, I took the Bible, put it put the earphones, the whole of the Pauline epistles. While I'm listening, I fell asleep. Next morning, six o'clock, I put Christian music when I woke up. And then everything in COVID left my body. Left my body. In two days, God healed me. Two days. And so, I want to tell you today, I don't teach on prayer. I've seen the results of prayer. You know. And it was crazy time. Crazy time. And so today, I want to discuss a few things with you. Maybe it will encourage you. It will encourage you. I want to encourage you this morning. And I'm sure Pastor has dealt with the issue. But I want you to turn with me to a scripture that I believe is very potent at this time. And it is in the book of Joel. And what does the Lord say in the book of Joel? I will restore. Come on somebody. What the Lord says, I will restore. 
in Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says, And I will restore to you the years the locust have eaten. I will restore to you the years the canker worm has eaten. I will restore to you what the caterpillar have eaten. And the Lord will say to you, I will restore what the palmer worm have eaten. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, this is my day of restoration. Come on, somebody. Now, the truth of the matter is, you possibly will identify with a few things. Now, where did you get this from, Pastor Gopal? During COVID, I opened my phone up to our television audience, to our radio audience, and to our local church in the community. I received half a million prayer requests. Now, let me say this to you, that when I went through it, I then put each need and I saw there was a tendency. Now, in, in our communities, one of the big issues was that people were challenged by the lack of finance or had financial stress. Companies shut down. Small businesses shut down. I can tell you without... A shadow of doubt, three months, the first three months, our local church took a financial dip. You see, Pastor, when fear comes on people, they withhold. Amen. And so, we just continued praying, trusting God, and I saw this happen and I thought, wow. Listen, folks. One week before COVID was shut us down in South Africa because all the countries had different timetables and different ways of handling it. I had already booked for my leadership to go with me to uh, past Johannesburg and we were to go and have a retreat. When we heard that COVID is going to bring a lockdown, I told them I cannot go. My wife told me, please go because next week everything is shutting down. I said, we're not going to go. I have to now plan what are we going to do when the lockdown comes because they gave us one week. Boston, that was a, a large sum of money. So when I got back, the airline said, that they also going through bankruptcy. And three airlines in South Africa has gone through bankruptcy. Two, no, three, I'm sorry, four went through bankruptcy. Three are not even flying presently. Yeah. And so, what has happened, we could not get our money nor could we travel. Then after a year, I had to fly to Johannesburg. On my way, I came to the, uh, the desk and I said, this is what happened. They said to me, well, if you tell us what date you want to fly, I'll change it now. I gave it to them. Then they said, I cannot get the accommodation and the car rental, I must phone someone else, which is the call center. And you know what a call center is. Call, and it is just a center. <laughs> so I called, 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 and no one answered. 
And so this company was now going bankrupt and they were going to give people 30 cents on a rand, whatever. Somebody met me. They asked me for all my details. Can you believe within one week they gave me everything that I ordered and paid for because I was preaching this word. It is a time of restoration. Come on somebody. It is a time of restoration. I'm asking you, do you read the Bible or do you live the Bible? You understand what I just told you? Now, I want to go one step further for some of you because this is what I, 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 I've experienced. Now, Pastor, you can check this out. That restoration does not mean because so-and-so took my money, so-and-so will pay back. Restoration means whatever source God will use. Oh, come on, somebody. God will use a source that you won't even believe. But there will be restoration because His Word says so. Come on, somebody. Amen. Many times, I want to take Job Blow to court. To get my money back. But God said. He cannot pay you. But I'll make a way. Oh come on somebody. Are you listening to me? So God will use somebody. That you will not expect. God's not interested. About who pays. Who doesn't pay. God's interested. About his word. There is restoration. Oh, come on, somebody. Is somebody believing this restoration anointing? Uh-huh. I said restoration is coming to you. Amen. Whatever you lost, God is about to restore. I say God is about to restore. The canker worm cannot have your stuff. The palmer worm cannot have your stuff. Oh, come on, somebody. The word worm cannot have your stuff. The locust cannot have your stuff. God's going to restore it. And let me throw something in. If your body have ever had this virus, I'm telling you, you're not going to suffer from post-COVID. God is going to restore your body. I say God is going to restore your body. Come on, somebody. You need to take this word to somebody who needs it. I say you need to take this word to somebody who needs it. Listen to me. Stop talking negative. You are in a faith church. Why do you allow a virus from China to control your faith? Come on, somebody. How can you allow negativism to come in? You shut the door to unbelief. You shut the door to fear. I tell you right now, God's not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Can I hear a praise to Jesus? Can I hear a praise to Jesus, somebody? I say, can I hear a praise to Jesus? This house, no one is going to open their mouth with a word of fear. I don't care what the government says, what the media says, what the medical people say. I believe what God says. Fear goes out the door. Faith comes in because God said, I will restore. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. You better believe it. Amen. How can you get this anointing if you online? Tell me, you need to understand this is not a time for us to roll over. This is a time for us to rebuild the walls and restore the gates. Come on, somebody. That's the word for you right now. You're going to rebuild the walls and restore the gates. That's it. Because the devil thought he'll come and he'll mess you up. The devil thought he'll kick, he'll kick the, the wall and the walls will come tumbling down. The devil thought he'll burn the gates and then you will be sitting down there with fear. But you rise up like a David. Give me, give me my Goliath. Because my Goliath is going to fall in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I make a bold declaration in this house today that my ministry, my life, my family, everything that's connected to me is going to be stronger than before. Because my latter days are going to be greater than my former. My latter days is going to be greater than my former. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not giving up. I'm not surrendering. I'm standing on the word of God. Everything the devil stole, God will restore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not going to allow the enemy to dictate to us. Come on, somebody. We have the authority. Just like that night, midnight, I sat on my prayer chair. I said, you demon, you cannot come. And mess with my body. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to steal my peace. By the way, you're not going to bring death in this house. We live in the third day anointing. I said we live in the third day anointing. Amen. And so you have to understand God's about to restore. That's what the Bible says. He said, I will restore. Then we found out that many people had issues with relationships. Marriage relationship, friend relationship, cousin relationship. Everything was affected because let me tell you something. There was a huge spirit of confusion. God is not a spirit of confusion. God is a God of order. And I'll tell you why confusion came out. We took the Bible, we put it aside, and we began to listen to politicians and medical people who didn't even know what they were doing. You understand? I'm telling you right now. Though he slay me, I will trust him. Though he slay me, I will trust him. Hallelujah. And you as a church need to understand that you must take a decision, right? Please, take a decision. That COVID is behind you. Because as long as you fear it, Pastor, it's in front of you. 
It dictates to you. It tells you what to do. It controls your behavior. It controls everything. Now, listen. I just want to say to you, I'm not asking you to be foolish. I'm not asking you to be foolish. But I'm asking you not to be fearful. Are you listening to me? Uh huh. You have to understand that. It's a big difference. You see, we men of faith, we're not men that preach foolishness. Some people say, well, Pastor Gopal, you preached about Peter walking on the water. Why don't I jump? in the sea and walk on the water. I'll tell you why you can't. Because God gave Peter that word. God didn't give you that word. You can only have faith in the word God gives you. Oh, come on somebody. You can only have faith in the word God gives you. If God tells you jump in the water, you jump in the water. If God never tells you jump in the water, you have to swim or you drown. So we need to understand that. You see, boys, I'm writing this whole book on pre-COVID, COVID, and post-COVID. I'm writing this whole book. And I'm just giving you an appetizer. Next thing is that people suffered not only with COVID, but with sickness. Your diabetes shot up. Your blood pressure shot up. Why? You heard COVID. COVID activated everything in your body. And it made those things to misbehave. And you need to understand that when God says, I'll restore, God means whatever your body has been treated by the world and its COVID and its fear and its diabetes and its blood pressure and cholesterol and everything else, God is restoring. Come on, somebody. I say, God is is restoring hallelujah i say today i'm walking in divine help oh but pastor gopal you totally healed i'm walking in divine help you understand i'm walking in divine help i'm not going to have lack of energy I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to have the effects or the after effects of COVID. I am restored. Oh, come on somebody. By his stripes I'm healed. Can somebody declare it? By his stripes I am healed. Amen. Amen. Now there's another issue. Because people didn't know how to handle these things, they turned to substance abuse. Now Pastor, this is all coming out of a half a million prayer requests. I put it in its categories. See? So I didn't read this in a book. This is from my own research when I opened up my phone for people to send in their prayer request. I used to get prayer requests every 15 seconds. Mm. Night and day. Yeah. And we used to bring these requests before the Lord. And I put it in priority after I looked at it and I saw substance abuse. 
You see, folks, you cannot drown your sorrow. Substance abuse drowns you. People never took alcohol, they started taking alcohol. Never took drugs, started taking drugs. That's the funny things. Because people do this because they become desperate. I tell you folks, I could have thrown in the towel just then and there. I took my prayer chair and I changed the situation. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many of you are willing to change your situation? Amen. I say, how many of you are willing to change your situation? Then I'm asking you to take your prayer chair. Yes. 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 Come on now. This thing can kill you, man. Yeah. Affect everything in your life. And I'll tell you what, Pastor. The lies that came with COVID. And people don't know how to discern. Deception came in. Every political agenda came in. Every medical agenda came in. They tore your faith. They punched your faith. They warred against your faith. Instead of becoming a victor, you became a victim. But I'm telling you now, God is about to restore. I said God is about to restore. Amen. You that are here, you that are watching me, you cannot tell me you're walking out of these doors as a victim. I declare you are a victor. I declare you are more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. I declare you the head and not the tail. You from above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. I declare the Lord your God is with you. I declare your faith. Your faith is going to work for you. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by the word of God. I'm walking by my prophecy. I'm not going to die before my time. I declare there will be no premature death. We will fulfill the plan of God. We will fulfill the purposes of God. The devil will not kill what God ordained. Because I'm not a victim. I am a victor. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And take your seats. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Now you see, this has allowed people to open the door for demonic activities. I mean, Christians behaved at a lower level. The people you thought were strong mm -hmm. became weaklings. And the people you thought were weaklings became strong. Because this brought demonic activity. Demons were speaking into people's ears. We've seen open display. Of demonic powers. And let me just clarify something with you. Can I clarify something? As a child of God. The devil cannot possess you. But he can torment you. Lots of people believe as Christians are possessed. How can you have two spirits in the same body? If Christ is my Lord. The devil cannot live because Christ will not allow coexistence. Come on, somebody. But the devil can torment you. I heard people could not sleep. I heard people having nightmares. 
See? And so I'm saying to you this morning that you need to understand that we cannot stay in that place. Now, my medical officer who is in the church, is the medical officer during the whole process, keeping the people in check, doing the uh, temperatures, making the masks uh, and, and everything. He got very offended with me two months ago. I said that there is no COVID. It's gone out the door. He says, Pastor Gopal, no. I said, brother, you don't understand. As long as you talk COVID, you will have COVID. You understand what I'm saying? Am I saying that nobody on the planet has got the virus? That's not what I said. What I am saying, that I'm not going to allow that virus to come and dictate to me. It has messed my life up for two and a half years. It spoke to our people. It messed up nations. People died by the millions. I had my friends in India. They were in the hospital queue. Before they got in, they died. I phoned for my uncle to be put in hospital. The, the manager, who's my personal friend, says, Pastor, I'd love to help you and your uncle, but come to my parking lot. The people are dying with COVID. So I'm not going to say to you that it is something to be treated lightly. But what I am saying to you, I'm not going to let that spirit dictate to me. Because if I allow that spirit to dictate to me, then I don't need to be in church. Because if I'm in church, I let the Spirit of God dictate to me. I let the Word of God dictate to me. I allow the prophecy to dictate to me. The Lord said, you shall not die. You shall live. So I'm living for God. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? If the prophecy is dead, then God is dead. If the promise is dead, then God is dead. But I'll tell you, the Word of God is rhema. Oh, come on, somebody. How come? Let me ask you a question. How come you read the Bible 20 years ago, you never went back to that scripture, one day something happened, that scripture comes alive. Because it's not logos, it's rhema. Oh, come on, somebody. You cannot kill what is in the spirit. You cannot kill what is spirit. Pastor will tell you, we preachers use scriptures here that we've never studied in our study. You say, well, how come you preachers use that? Because we don't understand. We're not in the natural. We're in the spirit. And God has taken us to that word. And that word 15 years ago, pa, spirit, life. So I'm saying to you, you cannot be controlled. You need to submit totally to Jesus. Totally to Jesus. I'm going to walk in a spirit of boldness. Come on, somebody. Now, there is an issue. And we will deal with that issue. Because there's another thing that is called post-COVID, which the medical people are saying it's mental illness. Stress and agitation and all kinds of stuff. But I'm saying to you, listen to me. If you're a true worshiper, a true intercessor, you'll not suffer with mental illness. Oh, come on, somebody. No, you're not listening to what I just said. You know why? We have mental illness. We've submitted our minds to that spirit. But I'm telling you, submit your mind to the Lord. That's why the Bible says your mind must be transformed. Yeah, right. You
speak negative, your mind is deformed. Your mind needs to be activated by the Spirit. Amen. By the Spirit. Amen. You need to put your hands over your mind and say, you're not going to think evil. You're not going to think negative. This mind that was in Christ Jesus is my mind. Hallelujah. I am walking in the mind of Christ. My mind is transformed by the Word of the Lord. I'm not going to listen to the word of the world. I'm listening to the word of the Lord. And though I don't agree with that preacher, I accept what he's saying. Hallelujah. Because some people are so programmed that they can't live at this level of faith. That when we prosper and God opens doors and God does miraculous things, they think we are superstars. We are not superstars. We raised our level of faith. Come on, somebody. I say raise your level of faith. I say raise your level of faith. How do you raise your level of faith? Through prayer, praise and worship, and the Word of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I don't care how you feel. Don't be motivated by how you feel. Be motivated by the Word of God. You are an atmosphere changer. Oh, come on, somebody. You are an atmosphere changer. I didn't come here to bring you a negative word today. I didn't travel all this way. And pastor, trust me to bring you a negative word. And then his trust depreciates. I came to stand with you in faith. In faith. Where two agree, touching anything. That's right, preacher. It shall be done. It shall be done. Your prophecy will come to pass. Amen. Are you listening to me? So, ah. Uh, I say to you, restoration is taking place. And listen, if you don't hear what I'm saying, I'm speaking to the atmosphere that dictates negativity in your life, your job environment, your neighborhood environment. Your home environment. That's why you need to come to the church. Because it's another environment. It is a positive environment. It's a praise and worship environment. It's a prayer packed environment. It's a word of faith environment. It's an environment where we tell you. God is to restore what the devil stole. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. I want you right now to raise both your hands. I want you to declare... Everything the devil stole, God, God is going to restore in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Everything the devil stole, God is about to restore. 